Greetings, my name is Robert Jenkins. I hope you noticed by now how you're doing today. Uh, today I want to talk about vessels and I want to talk about a lot of things and some of it may um, correspond to the first video that I talked about uh, previously dealing with identity. I want to talk about vessels and who we are in God and how we should see ourselves and look at ourselves. You'll see that a lot of things I'll talk about will be concerning around that particular area because I think that's very important to our life. So understand that. I have a lot of different vessels here sitting on the table and God makes all of us different. All of us have our own separate fingerprint. That's very key that you understand that. You have your own separate fingerprints. Even if you are a twin, you still have your own separate fingerprints. Even if they say you're identical twins, they still have a way to locate who you are. That is important because that is, a t that is really a way of God identifying us and for us to also to identify ourselves. Regardless of how much you like another individual, never stop being you. Uh, whether you believe this or not, it has become a real truth for me. All of your blessings, all of your prosperity, all of your success is tied to your identity. And there are things that are tied to you, which means there are um, certain material blessings that may come down the line, but they come in you being who you are. You must remain true to yourself. You may have heard this before, but it's a very powerful statement. You are born original. Don't die a copy. Remain who you are. I don't care if you have 500 apple seeds. Each one of those apple seeds have their own identity to who they are and what's inside of them. In these examples, I have a lot of different cups. Some of them look like they're the same cup. Some of them look like they're identical, but they really have a unique about each one of them. If you do any studying on anything that is made, they'll tell you even if it's made from the same plate, there is something different about that copy or there's something different about that particular vessel. Everybody has their uniqueness. So when I look at this, I have some cups that may be two or three ounces. I have some that are tall, five and six ounces. I have some that have some coloring to them. I have some that have a different material that they're made out of, but they're all vessels. Now all these vessels up here, I could pour water into all of them and drink water from them. But I have to look at how they've been designed and have they been designed just for water? Well, some of these vessels were designed to hold hot water. Now, this is a plastic vessel here. And if I pour extremely, extremely hot water, it won't be able to hold hot water as long as this particular vessel. Now, because how it's been designed, it's not have, it has not been designed to hold hot water for a long period of time. Does that make it less? Does that make the one that can hold hot water um, longer, greater? No, that means it is operating according to its design. Why is that important to you? Because sometimes we compare ourselves. I'm not as tall as the other individual. I'm not as short as the other person, or I'm, not, I'm light skin, I'm dark skin. He has long hair, I have short hair. He has brown eyes, I have blue eyes. You should not compare yourself to anybody. It's not important uh, how tall he or she may be. The problem would be this. Do you know why you were created, why you have what you have, and is you using what you've been designed to do for you? Now, for instance, I may take this vessel here and, and I may pour water into it. And this is God pouring himself into it. Power, as I said before, wisdom, love, kindness, integrity, creativity, uh, be able to be artistic, uh, be able to dance. There's a lot of things that may be inside of that element. Now, if I'm this cup and I look at him, I can become jealous because he can hold more water than what I can hold. He may have some gifts that I don't have. He may have some talents that was not poured into my cup. Well, let me tell you something that would be very dangerous. It does not matter that if I knocked this cup over and spilt the water, if I knocked it over and destroyed him because I was jealous of what is inside of him, if I knock it over and spill it, I still can't use it because I knocked it over. If I try to drain it, if I try to use it, if I try to rob him out of his gift, now I'll look at this and I'm trying to pour this, I'll come to find out that even when I'm full, he still has some left, which means I was not designed to hold what he can hold. There are some troubles that other people can hold that you can't hold. And sometimes we get jealous because of the elevation. He went this high. Well, don't look at how high that person went. Look at what he had to go through, what he had to suffer, what he had to be able to hold to be able to handle what he was handling. You can't handle the rape. You may not have been able to handle losing a mother and a father 
father in a car accident. So and sometimes your elevation is based upon your suffering. So don't look at that person suffering and envy them because they elevated. Look at what you've been doing in the hole because there is trouble that's going to elevate you as well. All things work out for the good. So regardless of what you went through, God never puts more on you than what you can bear or what you can hold. Understand what God pours into you based upon how you've been designed. And if you've been designed to hold cold water, then be the best cold water holder there is. If you've been designed to raise four people's kids that are not your own, be that best person. If you've been designed to build a school only for those who are handicapped, accept your vessel, accept what you was made out of and how were you designed. For years, I did not understand why I was left alone. I was one of those vessels that seemed to be on the other side of the table. It seemed that I didn't think like other people thought. I didn't have the same expression. I didn't fit into the crowd. So because I didn't understand my design as a vessel, I wanted to fit in with the crowd. I wanted to be used. I wanted to have what they have. But I was denying who I was, what I was designed. Now, I come to find out later that the reason why God had me alone because I was called to go against the odds. I was called to teach some stuff that may be against the norm. I was called to come against some institution that robs the minds of people. But if I can't be alone and embrace that when they don't receive me, when they reject me, I'll begin to compromise the words that are in my mouth, the thought process is in my mind because I want to fit in with the crowd. So I won't say some stuff I should say. I won't do some stuff I need to do. But if I can master who I was and God made me to be alone for a while, so when it comes to time for me to take a stand and if don't nobody agree with me, I can handle being alone. I love myself. I embrace myself. I know what I've been designed to be. I know the material in which I'm made out of. I, I realize now I can handle when no one agrees. I can handle when they may not like me, when they may ostracize me or put me by myself because I understand I was made for that. I was designed to handle rejection, but it took years for me to embrace my vessel. It took years for me to embrace my way of thinking. And now what I used to think was a curse was a blessing. My father was not there in the majority of my life, but I know how to be a father to others by the void that was in me. But all of that was training so I could embrace Robert James Duvall Jenkins. Embrace me. So you must embrace you. And yes, I am less talented than some other people, but I'm not trying to be T.D. Jakes. I'm not trying to be Miles Monroe. I'm not trying to be Michael Jordan. I'm not trying to be, I love music. I'm not, not trying to be George Duke or maybe um, uh, another drummer that I like, Dennis Chambers. I'm only playing like Robert Jenkins. I'm only writing songs like Robert Jenkins. I'm only dressing like Robert Jenkins. I have embraced how God made me, how he designed me. And when you do that in life, you'll come to find out that the reason why you haven't have what God has promised you, because he promised it to you and you're not being you. The promise was to you. But if you're not being you, you're trying to fit in with the crowd, you want folks to like you, I don't care if you have tattoos all over your bodies and earrings in your ear, I want to question you, why do you have it on? Because it's not what's on your head, it's what's in your head. And if you change what's in your head, you'll change what's on your head if that's not you. Some things we do because you want it to fit in. I'm telling you, learn to be original, embrace yourself. And the best way to embrace yourself is to learn how to be alone. That vessel is alone. You're not going to do it the way other people, other people have did it. And that's okay. Even when I'm talking to you sometimes, sometimes I stutter. Sometimes the word don't come out right. But that's Robert Jenkins. I'm learning to perfect myself, but not because I need to fit in or not because that's the way that it should be done. The only way I should do things is the way God called me to do it. Even when he talks to parents, he says, train the child up in the way he should go. Not the way you wanted him to go, but the way God designed for him to go. And you can't do the training if you don't know the way. Because you have to train them in the way they should go. How should you go? How were you designed? Now, sometimes in your design, the platform in which you live in 
It's not conducive to your design. So you have to find out where your platform is. A star knows in order for me to shine above you, I must be in the sky because I am a star. A tree says, but I'm a tree and I'm just as valuable as a star, but I don't shine like a star. I bear fruit. My domain is in the ground. A fish would say, I'm just as valuable as a star and just as valuable as a tree, but I don't be in the sky and I don't shine and I don't be in the ground as a tree that bears fruit. I'm designed to be in the water. Everybody must know who they are and how they've been designed. How do you know that? Because when you are pulled out of the place that does not cause you to have growth, then you are out of the place that's going to be conducive to your vessel. So the fish says, if you take me out of the water, I'm going to act like I'm going to die because I can't live outside of my environment because I've been designed to be in a certain place. The tree says the same thing. Take me off the ground, I'll die for a long period of time. If the star falls from the sky, it dies. Who are you and what should you be connected to to give you the life to your vessel? Now, I have another vessel here and I can pour water into this vessel. Now, you notice this vessel doesn't have the clarity to it. It doesn't have the same clarity. You can almost see through this one. It's transparent. There are some people that your vessel is made for people to see things in your life. You may have more of your life revealed. This is a vessel that doesn't have so much revealed. Now, you can't see, but there's something inside of this cup. It's floating up because it's inside of it. God want to make sure that when he adds something into it, don't have your own thoughts, your own ideas to who you think you are. Make sure you empty the cup so when God pours himself into it, all of you will come out and not a mixture of other stuff. I thank you for listening. I hope it's been helpful for you, but I'm telling you, know who you are. So you may be that vessel that's born in the projects. There's a reason why you're born there. Don't criticize it. Don't curse it because there are going to be so many kids that's going to come by that's in your same neighborhood. If you be you, you can help them be them. You can help them stay who they are because you're in a place. I don't care where you are, understand who you are, and you will always be a blessing to the place. This is Robert Jenkins. Thank you for listening. Hope you've been blessed. I'm dealing with vessels. This is part one and part two that's coming. But don't forget, know who you are so you can be what you've been called to be. Good night.